I hope this is going to add on a little bit of a clinical snapshot to Megan's great talk. And I'll be able to use terms like John has used now, like that it's a mess. Anyway, um, let me see. So today I wanted to present a snapshot of therapy that is provided in the rehabilitation ward at St. Vincent's Hospital, Sydney. So we know there's increasing evidence and interest in the amount of therapy patients have um, and that they receive post-stroke. So for example, 80% of patients with aphasia did not receive um, therapy. So obviously very early in the acute stages, we know that that's quoted. This is a typo, the next one. So it should say 59% of patients post-stroke did receive treatment. So that's still, still pretty low. And I think we would know from personal experience of working in the hospital or visiting people that um, patients do spend an awful lot of time alone or in their room not doing very much. Uh, the rehabilitation work I work in is um, comprised of 32 beds and offers rehabilitation to a mixed case. So for example, patients may be admitted um, after a stroke, they may have had a traumatic brain injury, they might have had a heart or lung transplant, they may have a progressive neurological disease or a general medical or surgical condition. But a large proportion of the caseload is patients who have had a stroke. The, the multidisciplinary team is comprised of occupational therapists, nurses, doctors, physios, dietitians, social workers, psychologists, neuropsychologists, diversional therapists, and of course, speech pathology. So, as John said, it can be a bit of a mess. Um, but I had a look in some files, which I've mentioned, mentioned earlier today, and uh, a quick snapshot, so once again, um, there were men and women in this study. They, uh, their age was from 30 years to 84. 10 out of the 17 were still working, which I think is really important for us as therapists. Uh, length of stay was anywhere from two days to 14 days. And also, you know, 10 out of the 17 had more than one diagnosis. So you can imagine, you know, it's challenging, isn't it? Working with patients who are milled by mouth, and maybe they've got a peg. They've also got a significant aphasia, and maybe they're dysarthric as well. So fitting in therapy for all of that is challenging and 15 of the 17 had aphasia post-stroke. So looking at the file audit, uh, I, I should have put more thought into this, but anyway, the average number of speech sessions ended up being 20.7. Not sure how you get 0.7, but anyway. And the average number of the multidisciplinary team sessions provided was 73.6. The average length of stay was 35 days. Uh, and, the, um, so, and I guess with this data, so it was looking, I looked at um, counting up, just going to the file, counting up the number of sessions a patient received that were documented in the file, and then just averaging that. So it hasn't really taken into account, account here the fact that um, where I work, it's a five-day service for speech, a six-day service for OT physio, and the fact that, you know, we know patients go to test, patients are unwell, patients don't always get therapy. But I thought I would just share a case with you of a man who I saw who had a left MCA stroke um, and came in just before Christmas. He was with us for three months and he ended up having 176 sessions from the multiple, multiple disciplinary team and 54 of these were from speech. So when I was going through all the data and looking at it, there were huge chunks where actually what physio gave OT and speech we were pretty similar. I thought it would be quite messy to put up on the slide 17 cases with all of that, but maybe next time. Um, and then there's a great paper that is coming out that uh, Rowan actually is working with and it actually should be Passion of Rehabilitation after Acute Stroke in Queensland Setting Total, total Dosage and Duration. So that was looking at, um, you know, the number of minutes patients spent in therapy with all the MDT team and also uh, the number of occasions of service, how long they're in hospital. It's a really great if you're interested. And then what did I learn? So. I'm sure I'm, see I'm sure I'm saying something that we're all keen on, and the fact that actually we make dysphagia a priority, but we also need to make communication or aphasia a priority as well. In hospital, if you can't ask for help, that is actually a serious concern. Also, I think we sometimes might undervalue the work of students and the fact of how much they can contribute to not only the patients now, but obviously when we're in hospital, 20 years. <laughs> and also asking for resources. My ward is about to get 15 iPads that are going to be at the patient's bedside with a lovely chain on them and padlock properly, but so the patients can actually use that for additional therapy. Let's not underestimate room programs. Also auditing, I think the fact that we can often think we're doing something really well, but we need to actually check. Joint sessions with the physio and OT and nurse, just like Kira was saying today. Technology, 
Um, and once again, I was saying, you know, I think the types of patients that are coming to rehab, inpatient anyway, is very different nowadays. And let's have a look at outcome measures. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. That was incredible to see what's happening. And I think maybe I'll move back.